the first element that really causes mistakes and ultimately um, challenges with the reimbursement is thinking that the program is a product. Um, it's not. It's a strategy, right? So you might think, okay, well, I bought a mileage tracking app. I should be good, right? Or I have an expense management tool, or I bought a favor program. Um, but it doesn't really work that way, right? It's it's a process. It's managed. Um, and so you might have purchased the the program with the intent that certain employees will be enrolled in it. But does that still make sense for them? Does it meet their current needs and their current behavior? The other thing that that we often see is people thinking that their program is stagnant. Well, it can't be stagnant. It's a living and breathing entity. It needs to mirror real market data. And it requires some upkeep to maintain compliance, of course, in line with goals and also in line with CRA or IRS regulations. Um, now, the other element that we see is people might not understand how their rates are built or managed. And that's okay. It's perfectly fine not to be an expert. And that is simply your partner's job, right? That would be the job of Cardata. Um, but if there's confusion about the how and the why behind rates, then you're the one who has to listen to your drivers who are confused and don't understand if their rates are fair. And that leads, leads of course, to buy-in challenges. So all of this coming together is really um, how there's some risks of not understanding reimbursement regulations and the role of your partner. And of course, this often results in not knowing what role you should play in your reimbursement program. So you might know too little, meaning you can't really effectively enable your, your drivers um, and your partners aren't helping you do that. Um, or you might be doing too much or you know everything and there's a lack of support, right? And there really should be a middle ground. It's quite common that we'll see some of these things come up. Um, you know, tax exposure is very, very common. That's one of the, the ways that we often see this problem getting awoken is that a person will, might say, oh, shoot, I noticed that my program is actually not getting me the tax free benefit that I wanted. Um, because, of course, the the IRS requires some some tax regulation, regardless of the program that you're using, particularly for favor. Um, also, that results in things like lack of buy in, right? If there's no buy in, if people aren't using the tools correctly, they're not capturing their mileage, they're not submitting their insurance, then that also exacerbates the, the tax exposure, which ultimately creates the lack of ROI. So it's all very connected, right? And if you're not pairing people up to appropriate tooling, then you're never going to see that that benefit, right? You're never going to see those happy employees. You're never going to see that, that financial benefit. Um, and then ultimately, these are quite common. Compliance and equity risks are a growing concern for companies of all sizes. So perception is reality, right? And the perception of fair pay impacts intent to leave. Um, you know, people are 49% more likely to leave their jobs in the near term if they perceive their compensation or their benefit to be unfair. Um, workforce related issues uh, relate, related to talent management is a huge priority, a huge strategic priority. It has been um, from 2022, 2023 and into 2024. Um, so when it comes to people who are using personal vehicles for work, their perception on whether they're getting what they need matters. Um, they need to feel as though they're being treated and compensated fairly for their actions. Um, otherwise, they're going to really go to a place that, that does do that for them.